Hey, what is going on guys? In today's video, we're gonna have a conversation about the hand cannon in Fortnite Project Era Season 7, as it has received quite a significant nerf, and I think it really makes it much harder to determine whether the hand cannon is worth running in your current loadout, so that's what we're gonna to discuss today. Now, the first thing I always do when we have a meta discussion video is go back to the previous seasons to see where the hand cannon or any particular gun has been to help us determine where it's going to be now and into the future. So let's start out with Season 5. In Season 5, I gotta be honest, I don't think the hand cannon was particularly good. Was it a terrible weapon? No, but it was just kind of meh. It was situationally good, but overall not great. Here's why. Yes, the player damage at close range, 75 isn't a joke. I mean, honestly, the, the hand cannon does more burst damage than the attack, but it, it wasn't good because at long range, you can only do 30 damage. Yeah, 30 damage is more than the AR, but it's not that much more. And it's when you take a long-range weapon, you need it to hit for a lot more than the AR, not just a little bit more. And it fired so slow, you're firing every 0.8 seconds for 30 damage, while tap firing AR, you can fire maybe 2 or 3 times a second for 20 to 25. You see what I mean? The hand cannon's damage is just too low. In addition, the wall damage was below 100, so you couldn't even one-shot a freshly built wood wall or any material for that matter, and overall, that made it very difficult to use at close range as a wall destroyer, it was just a very situational gun, and overall, I didn't see it as being particularly good. So, at that time, I put it at about C tier. However, in Season 6, we saw a massive overhaul to the stats in two key areas. The first was a long range damage got increased from 30 to 50. And now the hand cannon is hitting for more than double what an AR would at log range, and that genuinely makes it quite dangerous. It can do a lot of damage, up to 100 headshot, right? That's a lot of damage. So overall, it was pretty effective as kind of a pseudo sniper. If you didn't want to carry a sniper, uh, you could totally run the hand cannon as your sniper. In addition, um, it also had a huge increase to the wall damage. So we went from below 100 damage, jumping straight up to 150 wall damage for the purple, and 157 for the gold. That's absolutely massive because now you were able to one-shot wood walls. You were able to one-shot freshly bit, built brick and metal. So you could basically just use a hand cannon to blast out the wall. And you could either take that wall, pull a peace control player, or you could even just shotgun them immediately after shooting out the wall. It was honestly really good at close range. And this made the hand cannon a really, really strong option. Because the hand cannon could work as your kind of your SMG-like because you could shotgun SMG or shotgun hand cannon in the same role. And the hand cannon could both follow up in terms of player damage and destroy structures like an SMG could. But in a sense, even better because it was an instantaneous blast out instead of having to spray a wall. So the hand cannon was really strong in that role. But also could work as maybe you could drop your AR and run hand cannon shotgun SMG. Or maybe you could drop a sniper and run the hand cannon instead. The hand cannon was a very versatile weapon and it was really strong. I'd argue... It was probably the second strongest gun, only behind the blue pump shotgun, but you could honestly say it was the best gun in the game in Season 6. Now, in Season 7, we've seen no changes to the long-range damage, but we have seen the wall damage go down from 150-157 down to 100-107. Now, let's talk about the ramifications of that change. You can still one-shot out a uh, wood or brick wall that's freshly built, but... There's two key things. You can't one-shot metal walls. So as soon as they switch to metal, they basically completely nullify the usefulness of your hand cannon because you won't be able to one-shot out their walls anymore. And two, as soon as those brick and wood walls gain even a few seconds of health, it's not going to one-shot it. So that really makes it a lot harder to justify the hand cannon because now if you run a shotgun and hand cannon... The hand cannon doesn't really do that good of a job of destroying structures anymore, so you really need like an AR or sound system G or P90 or something to shred out those walls. Now, where does that leave the hand cannon in terms of how viable is it? I still think it is a somewhat viable strategy to run a uh, shock, well, really it's just pump hand cannon at this point. I think that's still viable because if you're quick with pulling out the hand cannon and they're not using metal, you can still one shot out walls, so it's not completely useless in the wall destroying uh, role. But it's also a lot less effective because you have to be really quick with it. And the other thing is, I really think it's very dangerous to be running shotgun hand cannon and like an AK. You can do that. If you're really good, you might be able to pull that off. But you basically have no real good structure destroyer in that in that situation. So I think that's quite a dangerous loadout to be taking. And things like pump and hand cannon only, I really wouldn't recommend that anymore. Because you basically have no real good structure destroyer. So overall, that's just a very risky loadout. So... 
For determining whether the hand cannon is worth it, it's honestly going to be hard to say because the Silas SMG and Compact SMG are both very quite decent right now, and it's just going to be up to you to determine whether that fits your playstyle. For me, for instance, I really no longer carry the hand cannon. For my playstyle, I almost never will run snipers. I prefer to have three guns and two of those for close range, which will be your shotgun and a shotgun follow-up. And really, I feel like the hand cannon is not doing the job anymore, and I tend to run Silas SMG. But for you, that might be a reasonable thing to do. So I think the key thing here is it's just going to be you're going to have to just try out. Uh, really, it's just going to be pump hand cannon. You really can't run into the shotgun. So you have to try out pump hand cannon and pump SMG or pump standard AR and kind of get a feel for if the hand cannon works still for you. I think, honestly, the hand cannon and the SMGs are pretty close in power level. Uh, the hand cannon is still a viable gun, but it's no longer this crazy, overarching, insanely strong gun. Now, do I think it should be changed in the future? That's honestly a good question. You could, it could maybe use a slight structure damage buff, honestly, but I think what we need to wait for is the meta to settle and see what people tend to agree on. I've heard both sides of the argument. I've heard people say hand cannon is done, but I've also heard people say they still like to run the hand cannon sometimes. So honestly, while maybe it could use a slight wall damage buff, maybe to like 120, I honestly think it's fine in this state. It's now not the clear and obvious option it's still a viable choice but if you don't like the hand cannon you don't have to run it and honestly i think that's how a lot of guns should be they should be strong enough so if you like it you can run it but they're not so strong that you're required to run it like you're required to run a spaz in this current meta so thank you for watching this video everybody uh, I hope that this helps you. Please leave your comments below. What do you think about the hand cannon? Honestly, it's interesting to hear you guys' perspectives. So I've heard both sides of the coin. And I will catch you in the next video.